was born on uh, St. George Island, Alaska, which is part of the uh, Pribilof group of St. George Island and, and St. Paul Island on 3 June 1932. Born in Springfield, Massachusetts, 1970. Uh. Yeah, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, in 1939. Towards the late summer, I got a gra draft notice, and uh, so uh, I decided at that time that maybe I really didn't want to uh, serve in the Army, so I had the opportunity to volunteer to uh, join the U.S. Marine Corps, which, which I did. I mean, uh, obviously West Point has a reputation for a rather intensive educational process. Um, you know, I grew up spending a lot of time surfing. Those habits changed quickly. <laughs> and uh, learned the uniform drills, learned my trivia, learned my knowledge. And, um, it, frankly, it changed me uh, dramatically, as I think it does every young cadet. Uh, it introduces you to the, the physical and mental discipline of the military um, and structures you to be a leader um, and to deal under stress. Uh, you don't necessarily understand it when you're at the academy, but those lessons come home. One morning I was on my way to school and I decided I wasn't going to school. I threw my books in the river. I went down to a recruiter and I forged some names and I was in the military. I was just one of those young guys that uh, I thought this was a, a good way out, I guess. Line. I was on the front lines all the time after getting over there until the end of the war. Okay. And most of our activities were at night and in, uh, in trying to uh, uh, readjust the uh, main battle line. Uh, we did a lot of, uh, lot of uh, patrolling and, and fighting for outposts uh, all along the uh, line in, in Korea. We were located the 5th Marines and 1st Marine Division uh, was located towards the western, western part of uh, the uh, line, uh, very near Penguin Jump, where, where the uh, ceasefires uh, uh, things were signed. Uh, they just had this massive problem of arms control, practically. So we uh, kind of instituted what we call the Operation um, um, Babylon Sweep. And it was a province-wide campaign strategy. Mm -hmm. And the goal of it was we broke it all down into 33 separate distinct zones that we were going to systematically, we went through every single zone um, door to door and secured all illegal weapons. I mean, there were certain weapons that we allowed them to keep. And if they had, a, if they had authorization because they were, say, um, Federal Protective Services or police or whatever to have their weapon and, and they could confirm it, then we let them keep their weapon. But we basically went door to door throughout this entire massive province. Uh, we, we jokingly called it Operation Take All Guns because <laughs> we would come back from, uh, from a day's operation and we would have, you know, hundreds of AKs and all kinds of other unique stuff that we would occasionally find, you know, grenades, explosives, IED components. Um, so, we were on the road a lot. I think we got to be marked men in some cases. Sometimes I feel that way. But, uh, no, I got, um, I was wounded, um, actually not on one of those operations, just coming uh, on a standard patrol with, uh, with one of my Iraqi battalion commanders. Um, got hit by uh, what's called an EFP, uh, Explosive floor Formed Penetrator, which is a special type of IED that, uh, basically um, incapacitated my vehicle and, and wounded all of us. Um, didn't kill any of us, we all survived, but uh, we all took away some mementos. People are prejudiced as long as they can afford to be. When you can't afford to be, you forget it. Let me tell you something, I picked up a lot of people because I was on dust off helicopters sometimes. They made no qualms about me picking them up. Uh, 
you know. So some of the guys I knew were die, die hard racist. Hey, I've seen them get shot, and of course, you know, we're a team. And you know, you go and you, you get them in a the helicopter and they're scared they're gonna die. They could care less about who you are or what color you are. So uh, we were just uh, finishing up on Good Friday. And uh, this was one of the few times that we had all of the National Guard from throughout Alaska at the camp, uh, at Camp uh, Denali. And we were on the parade field during the earthquake, of all things. I mean, the whole contingent was out on the parade field during that earthquake. I mean, the, the parade field looked like an ocean. The ground was just rolling. And we couldn't stand, you know. Right. Finally, everybody linked hands together, you know, just to kind of stay upright. Uh, after uh, uh, after that quake, uh, of course, the guard was activated right away into uh, state service, and uh, units remained here in Anchorage, um, where we provided security and against looting in downtown Anchorage during that time. Then we had units from Seward, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, damaged quite uh, extensively. Uh, Kodiak. Uh, we were trying to get units back to uh, to those locations so that they could help with the local uh, buildup and so forth. So we were we were quite active at that time. Um, we came up to Alaska hoping to climb climb Denali. Uh, that was one of our goals, being up here. You know, you're right there, you stare at the mountain across the bay, and yeah, it calls to you. Uh, well, when I was wounded, I wasn't thinking about that at all. Um, I've got a rather large amount of metal in my arm and no real feeling in my hand or control, great control in that hand. Uh, it's been gradually improving, but it's a club. <laughs> uh, so the thought of climbing, you know, a, a Arctic mountain up to 20,000 feet was just a little intimidating, but you know, my wife, uh, wife told me she was climbing it. So I said, well, maybe it's time to face up, figure out what I can do, and go after it. And uh, so I decided, yeah, I'm going to climb with you. Um, I took the thought a step further, and if I was feeling that way, then I knew there were other guys probably out there that felt the same way, that uh, you know, were doubting themselves during that recovery. Um, didn't know who they were anymore, or maybe had dreams from before their injuries that they thought had been crushed. Uh, so I kind of set out on a recruiting process, um, built up a team of guys who were like-minded and wanted to climb. Uh, we did a mountaineering course in, uh, in 2008, a 12-day course with the Alaska Mountaineering School up on the Pika Glacier in uh, Denali National Park. And a year later, we went up and we climbed Denali. We called it Operation Denali. And I, I try to help other veterans. Me and some of the guys I was in Vietnam with 40 something years ago, we go to the bush. I'm a service officer. I can file claims on the behalf of veterans with claims, disabilities or service related injuries. And I do. And uh, file lots of claims. But that's not all that we do. We go out, we build handicap ramps. We help guys with their cabins and this kind of stuff. And some guys are alcoholics or drug addicts. We just go out and BS with them. They don't want anything. They just want to be left alone, except for another veteran. And, uh, but they need that too. I'm glad to be in Alaska. And I'm really happy to be an American. Right here, right now. Yeah. And uh, when these people start complaining, I have to set them straight. You know what? You just don't know how good you got it. We got it pretty damn good here.